Okay, our journey arrives now at uh, the dynamics. We talked about the kinematics, so the way we can compute position orientation of the end effector knowing the joint position of uh, our robot. Then uh, about the mapping of the velocities between the joint and the Cartesian space, so the way our velocity, for example, propagate along the structure and compose the end effector uh, linear and angular velocity. And we studied, we discovered the Jacobian as one uh, crucial, very important tool in understanding and also in uh, uh, controlling robots because we studied here the algorithms for the inverse kinematics. Uh, we discovered that the Jacobian has a very important uh, role also in mapping between the end effector, uh, linear force and angular momentum, and the joint torques. Uh, by the way of the, I mean, kinetostatic duality, or I mean, uh, tau equal J transpose uh, gamma, okay? Uh, we studied then uh, trajectory planning and actuator and sensors that uh, we interrupted a little bit the, the, the journey until the dynamics. What is dynamics? Dynamics uh, is basically the study of the forces, the, the, the way the forces uh, uh, influences the robot movement. Okay, so we are going to, we need to basically extend the second principle of the dynamics, force is equal mass by acceleration. I guess you all studied in physics uh, the basic properties of the second principle of dynamics. Now we want to extend it for a rigid body and for a serial chain of rigid bodies. It, it will be much more complex from the notation aspect, from the symbolic aspect, but conceptually, this is what we are going to do in the next two lessons. <laughs> Those are the topics we will approach in the next two lessons. Uh, or today, we are going to discuss about the Lagrange formulation and the basic properties of the dynamic mode. And we will see all the rest in next lesson. Okay, so what do we want to do today? Basically, uh, we want to extend the main exercise that you have done in physics. Given a material point with a certain position, velocity, and acceleration, we want to write its uh, dynamic equations or equation of motions. Uh, given the second principle of the dynamics for equal mass by acceleration. And this is another way we can write it, okay? For a material point, from the pure mathematical aspect, this is a differential equation. And uh, what type of differential equation is this one? What kind of, okay, the opposite, of course. What kind of differential equation is this one? What are the properties of this differential equation? Is it linear or not?
ordinary <coughs> differential equation with the coefficients that are real numbers. Here we only have one, and we only have uh, the second derivative. This is our limit. Okay. Yes, it is linear. Unfortunately, we will lose the linearity, and our dynamic model will be nonlinear, not only. I mean, we will discuss about its properties uh, later on. And we will discover that knowing the dynamic model is um, a first very important step in the process uh, to the understanding, so the analysis, and the design of the controller. If we do know the dynamic model, our controller will be much more performant. This is not a novelty for you because when you design a controller for a, a linear system with one input and one output, you design based on you know, the Laplace transform of the dynamic model of your plant. And you call it PS, where S is the uh, Laplace variable. Now we are going to do something a little bit more complex, but the idea that the better we know the mathematical model, the better we can design the controller still is there. Okay? Obviously, if this is uncertain and you just have some random number, your controller that is based on this will behave randomly as well. It's the same. The conceptually is the same. We do need the dynamic model for two reasons, and uh, basically the two reasons um, are embedded in the two operations of direct kinematics and inverse kinematics. Uh, direct kinematics is uh, the process of saying, okay, I want to understand what is um, the evolution of the motion. I know the initial con the conditions. The initial conditions means position and velocity at t0, and uh, I know my input. I want to make the, well, the simulation, the numerical simulation. This is what we can do easily by integrating the equations. Okay? Basically, I know the initial condition for this one, velocity and position and origin. I know the function can integrate twice this and I have the position with respect to the time. Okay. Nice. This is very useful when I, do, uh, I, I need to make simulation. I never run a controller without a simulation first. Actually it is very important and from the temporal aspect uh, it takes uh, a uh, certain percentage of your process of design controller, for example, the numerical simulation. Numerical simulation are crucial. And if you make a wrong model, the information that you get from the numerical simulation are more or less useless for the following experimental phase. I told you, I mean, in, in theoretical semi, I told you about a uh, unpleasant situation during a project where one of the partners made a total mistake because they, they tested their algorithms that was a state estimate on a totally wrong model and when they arrived on the real system nothing worked okay? so it is important that we do know our model and we are always going to make a numerical simulation before any experiment Experiments are expensive, numerical simulations are cheaper, not free, of course, because there is your, your time, the, the, the software, in case you buy software, I mean, they're expensive, but it's always cheaper with respect to make directly an experiment. The inverse dynamics, on the other hand, is okay. Let us assume 
that I, knew, I do know position velocity acceleration along the time. I want to compute the force. It means simply here I have the mass because this is the mathematical model. I know the mathematical model. In this case, it's the trivial mathematical model because the structure is uh, the differential equation, and I know the structure and the parameters are or is one parameter is only the mass. Let me say I know this number. I know the acceleration somehow. Let me say I can measure it with, 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 with some system. And I want to know the force. Very easy, okay? And it will be easy. But very important. Because a lot of controllers will use the inverse dynamics to achieve the desired performance. Clearly, if here I have an estimate of the mass, an estimate of the acceleration, and the more accurate I am, the better estimate of the force I have. I need to make an effort in modeling, an effort in identification of the dynamic parameters, and uh, an effort in uh, uh, filtering, because there is no sensor that measures directly the jet acceleration. Uh, I can measure the linear acceleration of rigid body with an inertial sensor, we saw it, that is very, very noisy. It's more or less useless in, in engineering application, unless, I mean, vibration then. And uh, in these days, there is uh, uh, one of your former students, Giacomo, that is making the identification of the dynamic parameters. So maybe I will, I will bring uh, the, the plots after that we study the corresponding theory, okay? Of what is to Okay, so now we need to exploit the results of physics. I know that uh, you don't have in your career the study of the Lagrange, right? So you're pure, com pure you're computer science. Mechanical engineering, they do have, and the former electronic engineering, as I am, we, we had this exam at the time it was the name was Mechanical Rational, and then it changed the name with time. But I'm sure that you don't have uh, this, this uh, um, concept. So let me try to, to use, without uh, being uh, too, too, too confusing for you. Okay? Well, the Lagrangian allows us to compute the equation of motion of uh, a uh, system, dynamic system such as uh, a robot by resorting to the Lagrangian equations. Let us see a little bit the Lagrangian equation, the way they are written and the way we can uh, customize them for a robot. Uh, we have uh, a certain function, the name of the function is the Lagrangian, the Lagrangian embeds the energy of our system, the kinetic and the potential energy. Okay. The kinetic and the potential energy, if uh, we think uh, about uh, the way uh, we define the, the, the state of uh, a input state output system, I told you there is not a systematic rule, but let, let us think that we can assign a variable to each of the components that can store energy. If you look here, we have uh, one energy related to the position, the potential energy, it will be related to the gravity, and uh, one quantity related to the velocity, the kinetic energy. Oh, it's not far from what we have seen conceptually, I mean, we are there.
units that uniquely represent the system configuration without making too complex for now for, for uh, us now we can consider as generalized coordinates the gen position when I have the n gen position I know my robot configuration I'm able to, to, to write it down because assuming that we share the DH convention I know everything about my robot so the position of my robot is known and uh, Q is uh, a proper vector of generalized coordinates now I need to make the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to Q So the Lagrangian is a function of position and velocity. You want to make the partial derivative with respect to the position. I have some terms where I can have position and velocity again. Okay? Because, of course, the, the partial derivative does not make the position disappear. It depends from what kind of function. And we know that uh, we know, I mean, we will discover that for robot with ro spherical with a uh, rotational joint, here we know that we basically have always trigonometric function. Okay, we will have it in this case. Now, when we make the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the velocity, again, the same consideration, this function will still be a function of position and velocity. But then we are going to make the time derivative. And here is where the acceleration appears. Those equations will be the implementation for a more complex system or on the second principle of the dynamics. I have here come out the accelerations and here the input, the non-conservative Let me briefly say all the forces uh, except the, kin the one related to kinetic and potential uh, energy. Okay? Friction is here. Your motors is here. We will see that. It is very important to notice that what we want to do is to have our mathematical model as function of q and then q dot and q d dot so the, the acceleration as input we want to make it appear the motors so the, the torque tau of the motors this will be very easy because it's just here the, the right hand side of the equation is just put tau because this is what is written here. Okay. From the, let me say, uh, conceptual aspect, mm -hmm. it's done. I mean, this is what we are going to do. Now, the, the difficult part is to compute the Lagrangian with respect to Q and Q dot. We want to have a compact representation of the Lagrangian in order to have an easy way to compute those equations and then a compact equation of motions. The problem is not the, mat the material computation. I can, I can use a symbolic software in order to do it. The problem here is that I do want a model where I can read the properties of the model. I want a compact model, to, it will be a matrix model, in which I can more or less easily understand the properties. Okay?
Let us start uh, with an example. The example uh, is, as usual, no? or a planar link or a pendulum, no? the easiest uh, mechanical system that we use to start to understand the concept. In this case, we use a pendulum with a transmission, with a, a gear and a certain ratio that will be uh, represented by K. What is the kinetic energy of uh, the system? Okay, if I, I have a material point, the kinetic energy is this is how it differs from the torque of my Okay, is mass by square velocity, factor uh, one over two. And now we do have the same for our pendulum because for in rotational motion, the inertia takes the role of the mass. This is a scalar because I only have a, a rotation around one axis. So I here is a scalar. The linear velocity is substituted by theta dot square. Okay, that is, I mean, the angular velocity is a 3D vector, but in this case, it's constrained on one single direction, and this is the length of the vector. Plus, then, on the other, on the other end, I do have uh, the same for the motor, but here, I should have uh, the motor velocity squared. I want to have my model all written with respect to the joint, and the joint is the position of the link. For this reason, I do not write I do not write the velocity of the motor, but the velocity of the link using the Gear ratio. Okay? Then the potential energy. The potential energy is uh, related to the gravity. And again, I know that you I mean, didn't study it in physics, but it's okay. I mean, let, let us consider the main, uh, the main concept uh, and, and stay in more uh, level of intuition. Looking at the potential energy, uh, you can also understand theta equal zero. What is the configuration corresponding to theta equal zero? Can you tell me what is the configuration? Okay, potential energy is, uh, is zero when the, the pendulum uh, is, is down, and he, from here we can understand that uh, uh, this is where uh, we put the, the origin, but this is a convention. Okay, mass G is the constant of gravity, 9.81 uh, um, meter second square, and L is uh, the length from the axis of rotation to the center of mass. Let us assume that we know it, okay? Now, the Lagrangian is given by simply the sum of the two kinetic energies. In motion equations, we can just derive one just to see what are the computations that we have to do that are very simple, and then we first now Q dot I means that we have to do it for each of the degrees of freedom of our system in this case I is equal 1 so simply the time derivative with respect to uh, the dot
partial derivative that is needed is with respect to the velocity. Uh, from the analytical point of view, this is a second order polynomial, and I know that the derivative is twice theta dot, okay? It's partial derivative, so only symbolic with respect to theta dot. And this is the, the result. I can write it in that way, easily. And then I need to make the time derivative of this one with respect to time. The quantity in the brackets is constant. So with respect to time is zero. And they only have this one. Now, we can do the same with the, for, for the time for the partial derivative with respect to the configuration, <coughs> and we have uh, MGL sinus theta. At the right hand side of the equation, we need to add the non conservative forces. The non conservative forces are my input, this will be the force, I mean the torques in Newton meters, that I can use to drive the system. And then uh, I have uh, friction now it is important to to notice that here I decided to consider the friction okay but This is only the viscous friction. It's very easy because it's simply proportional to the velocity. Friction is a complex phenomenon. I, I just have a couple of plots uh, uh, later on in order just to, 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 to have it in, in mind. And uh, here we made uh, a pragmatic choice because this is the, a linear model of the friction. It's just proportional. Okay, we will see that there are some other nonlinear effects that <coughs> we may or not want to consider depending on the application, but they will make a lot a more complex our analysis and controller design. For the moment, we have uh, the simplest model possible, so linear in the in the in the velocity. Those are the more the equation of motion for a pendulum, and. Uh, very simple, but non-linear, because we have the sinus of theta. Okay? Our function is theta, we have theta, theta dot, and uh, theta d dot. And it is non-linear in theta due to the gravity force. The gravity force is a conservative force. Okay. And clearly, uh, it's already nonlinear, and it's a serial chain of one rigid body, because it's a pendulum. If we add uh, other rigid bodies, the intuition tells us that it will stay nonlinear for the gravity. But then we will have additional sources of nonlinearity that don't show up with one single rigid body. So we will have additional nonlinearities. Okay. This is just what I said. We want to compute the kinetic and potential energy for a robot. First of all, let us study the kinetic energy computation. I'm not going to derive all the equations by end, one by one. Just for your information, we had to do it when we make the exam a uh, long time ago with the same textbook as you have, but it was a question uh, during the exam to derive all the terms of the Lagrangian in order to have the mathematical. 
Okay, likely enough, uh, the kinetic energy is additive with respect to the rigid body. It means that uh, we can write uh, this formula and we can sum up all the kinetic energies of all the link and the motors. The difference between link and motors is not only the reduction. You can have the motors in different positions with respect to the link. In this case, you can adapt the equations and you can compute your uh, dynamic model as well. We will uh, use a, a, we will make an assumption for the position of the motor, but of course you can have the motor everywhere and they do have uh, a certain kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of the motors is not only the fact that they are rotating, clearly. They are also translating because if I have a motor here on my elbow, I'm moving around my elbow. So this piece of material, the motor, also have a, a linear velocity with respect to the base frame. And, and so this is the reason why we need to consider its kinetic energy. Okay. We start uh, with uh, a generic link, center of mass. The center of mass uh, will be the, 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 the origin for a linear and angular link velocity. And with the star here, we consider a, uh, a generic elementary um, uh, piece of volume of the link. Okay, so this is a position vector for the elementary <coughs> piece of the link. The kinetic energy is defined, this is a definition, uh, by, well, if you look at this integral, still is mass multiplied the square of the velocity. Conceptually, nothing is changed, but we are generalizing the concept because we are not uh, dealing anymore with uh, a material point, mass concentrated in one point. Our mass is distributed. And we, we need to make the integral of, uh, well, rho is uh, uh, the density multiply, uh, and uh, dv V is uh, the, um, the volume, elementary volume. So this is the integral over the volume of mass multiplied by square of the velocity, basically, okay? If you make the dimension check, it is a scalar, fine, okay? Because we already saw several times now, in theory is the same and in robotics, that x transpose x uh, is the square of the vector. Okay, now I need to, to make some computation. First of all, uh, I, I need to, to compute the linear velocity of the center of mass, and this is again a definition when my mass is distributed over a volume, and uh, I need to compute the position, uh, sorry, position of the center of mass. This is the position, sorry, I, I say velocity, no, position. In this way, I can compute the linear velocity of the elementary particle by resorting to the linear velocity of the center of mass. Okay? The angular velocity cross product the vector position from the center of mass to the uh, elementary particle. And I substitute this one, this term, here. This is a, a, an attempt that I'm doing in order to have a, a compact way to compute my kinetic energy. I don't like the integral not distributed over the, 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 the link. If I know the center of mass and the linear and angular velocity of the center of mass, I do prefer to substitute, and I discover that I have a fourth term. Fourth term because this one goes inside 
this square operation. Okay? First term is transnational. Basically, okay, we can just I can show you <coughs> very easily why for the terms. here I put it in the in the integral and of course this is constant over the integral I can bring it out from the integral sign and the integral of the density is the mass uh, very nice I do have uh, a kinetic energy for the translation for the translational part of the link that is similar or close to the kinetic energy of the material point. Just, you know. Then, when I do make the, comp the, the multiplication of this term multiplied by this one, okay? So this is transpose multiplied by this uh, by this one, uh, and I have two of those terms because the other is this transpose multiplied by this one. It can be demonstrated that this is zero; does not contribute to the kinetic energy. And then I have the rotational. The rotational uh, is. Uh, a new concept, let me say, with respect to the material point. Uh, conceptually, no, it's, it's a new term. Uh, is uh, we are generalizing the, the, the kinetic energy to the rotational part. As, you, as uh, I mean, usual, as uh, you discovered in robotics, uh, the concept concerning the rotation, the orientation, uh, the angular velocity uh, are a little bit tricky, uh, a little bit more complex than the linear part. Okay. And this is also for the kinetic energy of the rotation of the rotational part. We are go not going to, to go into the details, but basically I need to make uh, R transpose S transpose multi multiplied by S R. Okay? Put it inside the, the integral. This is what I have to do. And then uh, I do exploit the fact that the cross product this is a cross product I can reverse the order changing the sign and why I'm, I'm doing this operation there is a reason Change the order, yes, okay. There is a reason. Well, the reason is that when I do reverse, I discover that omega i here is at left and right side of this product is not function of the position. The angular velocity is constant along the link. Let me say a little bit better. It's not function of uh, the elementary particle of the link. So it's not function of the position within the link. Okay? 
Because the angular velocity for the rigid body is constant in all the rigid body. We already have seen this and we exploited it in, in the differential kinematics. If it is constant, I can put it out from the integral sign. I, I need to pay attention that when I work with the uh, matrices, I always pay attention to where my matrix is. So uh, I can put it out on the left side, this one, and the right, this one. Okay? And then uh, what is inside my integral is something that is function only of the mass distribution of my limit. Because if you, if you look at that, there is the density, rho, and then uh, S transpose S, that is more or less the square of the position. And this is something that is only function of the geometry and the mass distribution of my link. I can collect the integral in a term that I define then the inertia. The inertia matrix. The inertia is a three by three element. Or inertia tensor if you want. The properties of this matrix are that it is symmetric and positive definite. This is the generalization of the concept of mass. Mass is positive. Okay. We, we know that it is otherwise we all the physics fall down. And the inertia tensor is positive. It is a matrix. We cannot say positive. It is positive definite. It means that uh, at least the element of the di on the diagonal are positive, but this is a, a necessary <coughs> but not sufficient condition. The, it is positive definite. Nice. And also symmetric. Now, all the quantities have been written with respect to the base frame. And uh, it means that the inertia is configuration dependent. Without entering into the details, but we can uh, better write the inertia with respect to body fixed frame in order to have it constant. Basically, I can make you a very simple example. This is a base frame. And this is the same object that is subject to in angular velocity that is the same with respect to the base frame. Okay. Now, the inertia is a, a matrix of uh, how the, 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 um, uh, the body opposite to the motion, like the mass. Okay. It's clearly different in, this, in those two cases because this is the angular velocity with respect to this one. And this is moving in this circle and this is moving in this circle. This is apparently large inertia with respect to this one. Movement that is much larger. Okay. Uh, this way. But if I do represent the inertia with respect to the body fixed frame, the object is the same. Okay. Any, any frame that is attached but the same, it sees the same inertia. We can exploit it in order to have a constant matrix to work with. This one is a constant matrix to work with. Okay?
Okay. We can thus write the kinetic energy of the link. The kinetic energy of the link I is given by two of the four terms that we encounter because two we I mean the sum is zero and the other two are the kinetic uh, energy for the translational and rotational sum. Nicely I can write it in that way and then okay but I need to compute uh, the linear velocity of the center of mass and the angular velocity of the rigid body. We already have done it with respect to the end effect. Now, the concept is the same. If I'm able to compute the end effect or linear and angular velocity starting from the joint velocities, I am able to do it for any point in the structure. Actually, I already have done it because this has been computed by propagating the velocity. I already have all the velocities along the stretch. The only difference is that I compute all the linear velocity with respect to the origin of the frame. Now I need the linear velocity of a center of mass. Okay, I have to adapt the last column of the Jacobian, but what is important is that I do have the instruments to do it, the mathematical instruments, but also the the software instruments, because this is a, a Jacobian. And uh, the way it is written is JP, it is a Jacobian. Uh, here, if you look at the subscript, LI means pay attention. You have to use the Jacobian with respect to the center of mass of the I link, not the end effect. Conceptually, it is not a problem. I'm able to compute linear and angular velocity of all the points of my structure. Conceptually, I'm happy with <coughs> And here there is the, 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 what I just said about the velocity of the central mass. Okay? I'm just able to compute without without a, a large effort but with the instruments that I already have the angular velocity is the same conceptually it's just on another page because well I, I, I will try to, comp to compact in one page next ok for the motor conceptually is the same the notation is different, but conceptually is the same. Okay? If you look at the kinetic energy, I just have to change the point where I'm computing <coughs> the kinetic energy, and I'm just using the motor I instead of link I as notation. Conceptually, no changes. We are happy with that. Okay. Now, here I want you to pay your attention because here something interesting is showing up. Now, if I make the sum of all the contributions for the kinetic energy, I discover that my kinetic energy can be written in this way. If you look here, the kinetic energy, this is square in the joint velocity. Okay? And the same for the link. This is the kinetic energy of my row, but without entering into the details on how to derive it. So no, it's, it's not conceptually difficult, but let us, let us focus the attention on the representation of the kinetic energy. Material points. 
1 over 2 mass multiplied square root of velocity. Serial chain of rigid bodies with motors. I can demonstrate that this is equal. Square of the velocity. The velocity are the velocity the velocities of the generalized coordinates. This is what we wanted. We wanted to write our dynamics with respect to the degrees of freedom, and in particular with respect to the joint that we decided will be will represent the configuration of the robot and the corresponding velocity q dot q and q dot will be the state of the robot so this is a modeling effort that we are studying in few hours that has been done by the community several I mean, some decades ago in order to have a very compact way to write down the equations of motion of a robot this is not trivial I mean conceptually the, the, the passage from the mathematical model of force equal mass with acceleration to something that uh, is expressed with respect to Q, that are our joint coordinates, uh, is really an added value that simplify a lot the way we will handle our robot, our controller, or analysis and design, the understanding of the robot and the design of the now, if this is the square of the velocity, the role of this guy here is the role of the mass. But it's a generalized concept of uh, inertia or mass. Okay, let me say better inertia. It's a generalized concept. First of all, it's function of the configuration. It's function of Q. And we will understand easily why in, a, in, a, in some example. Then is n by n, where n is the number of joints. So n is the number of degrees of freedom. For the material point, I have one degree of freedom. Material point is moving on a line. And the inertia, let me say, is a scalar. For the pendulum, it was a scalar. Now we have n degrees of freedom. This is an n by n matrix. It can be demonstrated by, let me say, simple counterexample that would uh, jeopardize our, our physics knowledge that this guy here needs to be symmetric and positive definite. Of course, it is configuration dependent, but this is something we already so because we build it in that way for the potential energy the computation is almost straightforward because the computation of the potential energy here is the gravity vector, so 3 by 1, with the ex if it is expressed in inertia frame, in base frame, uh, usually z is pointing uh, upward, this is uh, 0, 0, minus 9 dot 81, okay? Multiplied by, well, here we have the ele elementary particle, and as, as usual, the integral over it. But it can be easily demonstrated, since due to the fact that, that gravity is constant we can have the gravity out of the integral and this is definition of the center of mass and the, the, the link I and the, 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 the motor I they do have <coughs> very, the very simple let me say uh, expression for the potential energy again this is additive the total potential energy is the sum of all the potential energies And we now have uh, the two Lagrangians. I mean, the, the, the Lagrangian given by the two 
contributions of the kinetic and potential energy. Okay. Can we make the computation of these equations? This is the kinetic energy. Then we have the potential energy. The potential energy uh, does not have, a, I mean, a, a, a compact expression as this one. But now I can make, I can compute the equation to move. I need to make those derivatives, and we are going only to see. I mean, the main uh, aspect of those derivatives. I do expect that somehow mass by acceleration will show up. Okay? The generalization of mass by acceleration. And this is what, I mean, this is our, our, uh, let me say, objective. We know where we are going to. The, par the, the partial derivative of this guy with respect to Q dot. This is similar to x squared, okay? And we already have seen something like that because we, we use a similar expression uh, for in several in several <coughs> several times along the last the last months, and we know that this is uh, two. Let's simplify with this one, and then we can have uh, uh, b q dot, okay? Because divided by partial um, uh, partial with respect to q dot, and then we have to divide by the time, and when we be divide by the time. Let me say the kinetic. Uh, only with uh, okay, okay, this is all together. Okay, all together. I don't have Q dot in the potential energy. And the, the only term is this one. Then I have to divide it by the time. And now this is the product of two functions of time because both Q and Q dot are function of time. And it, it means that uh, The time derivative of a matrix is very simply the matrix where each element is the time derivative of the corresponding element. Okay? Is a compact notation of something that is not new. Well, I do have a confirmation of what we have done up to now and what we, I mean, somehow expected here, inertia by acceleration. This guy is positive definitely. And this is the acceleration. Nice. Something new. Because my, my um, mechanical system is more complex, of course, uh, than a material point. And some new, I mean, dynamics are, are, are uh, effect are, are showing up. Okay? And this is what is written here. I have uh, the inertia multiplied by acceleration. Then I have uh, plus here nonlinear terms. The nonlinear terms uh, here I'm collecting b dot q dot, and then I'm collecting uh, this term that is coming by the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q. Okay, that is given by the partial derivative of the kinetic and the potential energy. And this is simply the gravity. The last term is the gravity. This guy here in the middle is new for you. It collects the Coriolis and centripetal terms. I don't know if you heard about those terms in physics, maybe in the, in the, 
in, in a very simplified version in physics, maybe you, you heard about that. Okay, we are not going to the details of the computations that are here, are in textbook, and uh, I mean, it's just basic mathematics, but what is very interesting is to, and then we make a small break, what is very interesting is that for each of the joints, for each of the motors, for each of the degree of freedom of the system, we are able to write something that is very close to force equal mass by acceleration. This is a generalization. We have the acceleration of uh, the joints and now I have to notice something this is I the first motor and here I have the sum of all the accelerations from the physical aspect it's very simple if I move a link also the other one uh, will uh, feel an interaction with this one. There is an exchange of force. They are connected. You cannot move a, a, a link and without affecting the other. If you are on the ice and you move an arm, the rest of your body will suffer from that. Okay, will suffer, will interact with you from that. There is a, a coupling. <coughs> now, all the correlate centripetal terms are function of the velocity and also the cross product of the velocity. So velocity of link E is affecting uh, velocity of, uh, multiplied by velocity of link J is affecting the force on link E and then the gravity. Now I think uh, the equations of motion are more readable in matrix form. That is this one, then uh, I'm coming back to the other slide. I think they are more readable in this form. Here we have added several terms. Inertia by acceleration, corollis and centripetal term. Then here I added the viscous friction the non-conservative terms, okay? The static friction, whatever, non-linear function is static friction, the gravity, then the input, my motor, and then, well, we have seen uh, this term in the statics. If I have a force moment acting on the end effector, this is going to be projected on the joint torques. And we need to add this term too, because it's going to move the robot. Even if, I mean, statically we have this relationship, but if I apply this one, I project on the link and they're going to move, of course. Okay? We stop just a moment here, 10 minutes, and then we come back to the three slides that I jumped and we will uh, talk a little bit about the properties of this motor.